Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina, visiting Parkway Volvo. And I'm checking out the newly redesigned 2018 Volvo XC60 T6. Now this is an all-wheel drive vehicle in the inscription trim level. Now this vehicle, if I'm not mistaken, has every single option you can possibly get on this vehicle. I'm gonna show everything off to you today. So let's go ahead and get started. This vehicle is sitting on 255, 45 Continental Cross Contact tires wrapped around 20 inch diamond cut aluminum wheels. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors on all four wheels. It also has an air suspension so that way the vehicle can, depending on what mode you're in, can raise and lower and also you can lower the rear end to access the cargo area better. The name of this color is Pine Gray Metallic. And it's kind of a cloudy day, a little bit of sun shining here, but it kind of looks like a very mild green mixed with gray, I suppose you can say. I don't know if the camera can actually pick it up and, and do it justice, but it's a very interesting and unique color. Okay, so looking at the front, has the Thor's hammer Dave time running lights. They look fantastic. Parking sensors across the front. It also has a very advanced uh, safety suite up here. The sensors right here next to the rear view mirror. You also have the camera system. There's one camera right here. You can see it kind of hidden right in here. There's actually a camera on all four sides of the vehicle, which we'll look at when we get inside. Uh, it really helps out with parking and moving, navigating through parking spaces. The headlights are powered by LEDs and they're for your low and your high beams and reflector housings. And they're auto leveling and active bending. So keeping the light in the direction that you need them to be without blinding other people. You also have the LED fog lights that also serve as cornering lights. On the side mirror, there's a little indicator here that lights up with the blind spot monitor system or the rear cross traffic alert system. Now this one, of course, it if there's a vehicle in your blind spot, it will illuminate, but if you, there's a vehicle in your blind spot and you go to make a turn, it's actually going to turn the steering wheel, kind of gives you a little tug on the steering wheel to make sure that you don't make that, that, that lane change um, in addition to all the other blind spot monitor systems. So this is a completely new feature where it actually uses the steering wheel as a way of letting you know if you don't look at the light and you don't hear the chime uh, when you put your turn signal on or whatever, it will alert you there. Okay, so looking at the profile, fantastic looking wheels, everything about it, very classy looking vehicle. So you can see it has the, uh, the chrome around the outside of the, all the windows. And then it also has a chrome down here, just kind of accenting the style and the length. And the rear glass has the privacy glass. Even the roof rails have that same matching uh, chrome look. This is what the key fob looks like, and it's a leather bound key fob, very comfortable and stylish looking with the Volvo emblem on this side and just a smooth black background back portion here. And the buttons are on the edge. There's the, uh, the, the panic button. And on this side, you have the lock and unlock and the ability to open up the power lift gate. And there's a physical key here on the inside that will slide out in case you need it. But generally, this is designed where you could just keep this in your pocket and you can use the vehicle 100%. There's also an app on your that you can install on your cell phone in which you can re remote start the vehicle, you can check on the vehicle, and all kinds of stuff. So as long as I have the key with me, like I mentioned, it's a proximity key system. So right now, if I need to lock the doors, all I have to do is touch this little place right here. It will lock the doors and lock the uh, fuel door and turn in the power side mirrors. 
unlock it. I just put my hand behind the handle. It senses the key. It senses the hand position and allows access to the vehicle. Okay, so here's the inside of the passenger door and check it out. This one has the premium Bowers and Wilkins sound system that is absolutely fantastic. It sounds amazing. In my opinion, the best factory sound system put in any new vehicle that I've seen anyway. And you can see it has this uh, stainless steel speaker grill, just fantastic. So you have a memory seat positions for your passenger, your door lock controls there, and all soft to the touch, all around, everywhere, up here and where your arm would go. This is, can serve as a pocket, and then you have the large pockets there at the bottom. Here's your threshold with the uh, Volvo seal plate. So the passenger seat is just about as advanced as the driver's seat. Absolutely one of the most comfortable seats in a vehicle. So you have some power seat options here. Now it of course goes forward and back and all that stuff like a dentist chair, but you also have the ability to change uh, your side bolsters, the width of the side bolsters. You can adjust this portion here, your thigh extender. You can also move your uh, lumbar support up and down and get that kind of fine tune it. So this seat is highly customizable and you can really get a comfortable position and here on the, on the passenger side. Typically these are features that would be reserved for the driver because they're special, so they have all these extra stuff. But here on the passenger, you have memory seats and you have all these adjustments. So if you're riding along, you get to be as comfortable as the driver, maybe even more comfortable. So there's a net pocket there on the side. And look at all the leg room. You can see it doesn't taper or anything. It's just completely straight out. I'm gonna put all the measurements and volumes and all that stuff in the description. Uh, but just to give you a visual reference of how much leg room you have, looks fantastic also the driftwood real driftwood here now you notice this is a little bit different from the other vehicles you can see it's uh kind of has this linear grain and also kind of protrudes out a little bit lockable glove compartment and it's massive and it's cooled as well have a little storage pocket there at the top all felt lined here at the bottom. Okay, looking at the back door, all soft to the touch, just like the front, from all the way down where your arm is. Very soft cushions, by the way, as far as your arm rests. And then a storage pocket there. There's your threshold. Heated seats back here as well, with the uh, perforated leather. Contoured, nice and comfortable, even for back seats so this is basically a bench seat but it does kind of simulate here on the ends bucket seats because of the way the bolsters are but it does have a center seat if you need to use that so right here is your armrest of course you have a little pocket there also some cup holders that you can put away a little place to put some stuff a little pass through right there and this folds up in case you need to have that third passenger in the center now they also has the latch system for car seats. Now the third passenger would have to navigate around this hump here in the center, but overall the legroom is good. It has a uh, plastic back of the seat with the net pockets and your rear climate control is controlled right here. You also have a, these little LED lights back here. But right next to it, there's some handles and a little hanger. But right in there, there's an accessory that Volvo sells. It's one on both sides. Uh, there's one in front and the rear, and it goes across the vehicle over to this side. And you can put a bar there, so hanging clothes or hanging up cargo stuff. Check out that panoramic sunroof. We'll look at that a little bit more detail later. The headrests also have an auto fold feature as well as the seats, which we'll get into that as well. Fuel doors here on the passenger side and it's a capless design. So all you have to do is put your nozzle in there, pump the gas. You don't have to worry about a cap uh, being too loose and turning your check engine light on 
or just getting in the way at all. Okay, let's take a look here at the back of the vehicle. Has a little shark fin antenna here on the top. And it has that rear spoiler, third brake light, windshield wiper, has the parking sensors across the back, has the camera or just under here. Dual exhaust tips looking nice. Okay, so there's a couple ways of opening up the power lift gate. I can of course use the key. Uh, I can also push a button under here. Right now it's running, but there's also a feature in which you kick your foot under here. It will sense your foot and lift the tailgate, but it's only when the vehicle is locked and turned off. So let's go ahead and push this button here and it will lift up completely automatic. So here's your cargo area. And even when you have all the seats occupied, you still have a pretty good amount of space back here. So there's some stuff in the way, but just hopefully that'll give you an idea of the amount of space, how small that pile of stuff is compared to the overall space. You have a 12 volt power supply in here with a net pocket that's removable. You have an elastic band here so you can place stuff in there and it kind of holds it in place. Cargo tie downs on all four corners. And here's the cool stuff. So if I want to fold the seats down, all I have to do is simply push a button. So I'm going to push this button now. It's going to fold down the headrest and fold the seat down. It kind of flops down. So if you have something, something in the seat, uh, it's not going to go all the way down, but uh, just it gives you the ability to add to your cargo space so substantially back here. Also, while you're loading something up, if you need to raise or lower the rear of the vehicle, you just press and hold this. It actually lower the vehicle down or you can raise it up. Whatever your needs are in the moment. So really easily just push a button and, and change the height of the rear of the vehicle. All right, let's look under here. So this is where you'll find your spare tire, your tools for your spare tire, a little bit of more cargo space up there. Also your, uh, your tow hook. And you can see the little pressure tanks back here for your suspension system. Now the, this shade is removable, so you can you know, you can move this down like so. And if you really need to open up this area, you remove the shade, you can fold down the seats, and you really have this massive cargo space when you need it, when you don't have need to have all the passenger space. So basically, you can have a combination of cargo and passenger depending on your needs by folding one seat down or the other. Now the power lift gate, let's take a look here, has this little removable shade right here as well. And you can push this button to lower it, or you can push this button and it will lower the tailgate and lock the vehicle at the same time. But uh, right now we're just gonna push that. So if I were to push the other button, it would close down, lock and secure the vehicle. If it's turned off, I can take the key, walk away, and I know the vehicle is secure. As long as I have the key inside my pocket or in the in my bag in a bag or whatever, as long as it's inside the vehicle, to start it up, you just push and hold the brake and turn this knob, and it will start up for you. Okay, so here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice this one has the the rubber floor mats that snap in place really nice this is i highly recommend the rubber floor mats so take a look at the accelerator and brake pedal you can see the accelerator pivots there at the bottom keeping things from sliding underneath it and interfering you have a footrest here on the left side pretty good size one too okay so let's take a look under the hood okay to open up the hood very simple it's a little bit different from some of the other volvos usually the volvo latch 
is at the end of this line and you'd find it here. But as you can see, you can actually see it because they make it nice bright yellow, but it's right in this area. And you just simply push it to the right and lift up the hood. Now it takes almost no hood, no pressure from my hand and it's already lifted up. And it actually is secure in two places. So you can see there's a, a latch there and there. So you do want to make sure that you, you know, close it down pretty forcefully and make sure that it latches in both, both places. Now you notice it went up to about this, this height right here. So if I were to take the hood with my hand, I can just keep going with it and keep going with it until it reaches this really high position. And that way I have plenty of access to the engine compartment without the hood getting in the way. Okay, so speaking of the engine compartment, let's check it out. So you can see it has this, uh, this seal around the back right here, across this back portion. And this helps out with the airflow as well as noise and things like that. Seals up onto the hood when you close the hood. And all insulated, everything is secure. Nice and neat, packaged. There's no stray wires or, you know, messy looking anything under the, under the hood of this vehicle. This vehicle is powered by a 2.0 liter supercharged and turbocharged direct, direct injection four cylinder engine with 316 horsepower at 5,700 RPMs and 295 pound-feet of torque at 2,200 RPMs. And it's paired to an eight-speed Geartronic automatic transmission with the stop-start feature. Okay, here's the inside of the driver's side door. Now it's just about like the other side except for it has a few more buttons. So you can see it has two memory seat positions just like the passenger, your door lock controls, power window now right in here is for your child lock so this is you can turn on your child lock to where the children can't open up the door or roll up and down the window uh, you can turn that easily on and off some of them have them other vehicles you'll see that feature kind of here on the end of the door where you manually do it uh, this one actually has a very convenient button right here so you have power windows one touch up and down nice and smooth Your side mirrors are adjusted here. You just pick a side, you adjust it with this little pad, this little joystick here in the center. If you want to fold them in, power fold them, you just push them both at the same time and it will power fold them in. All right, so there's your threshold with the Volvo sill plate and the fancy seat with all the adjustments here. And I'm actually, when I get inside the vehicle, I'll show you, there's a visual, uh, pop-up screen on the on the screen there uh, letting you know what you're adjusting at what uh, particular moment check it out it has the uh, Swedish flag right here on the leather seats it's your dimmer switch for your interior gauges the ability to open up your power uh, lift gate there and it has a tilt and a telescoping steering column which you can lock in place right here so here's the heads-up display so as you're driving, you'll be able to have access to the speed limit, also your speed, but also it has more information on there depending on what you're doing. So you can have some blind spot monitor information. You can also have your navigation, uh, which direction to drive information will show up here. Um, but just generally, it will just give you the basic information as little as possible uh, while you're driving. But it keeps you from having to readjust your eyes down on the, uh, on the gauges and all that stuff. This is also, you have the ability to adjust the brightness, the leveling, and also turn it on and off if you just don't want it to there. Okay, let's take a look here on the inside. Absolutely fantastic. Check out this driftwood. It protrudes out from the dashboard, and then it has that uh, metallic lining around the outside on the edge and it goes all the way around and for what I understand is it's like they call it reclaimed driftwood and it's hand placed in there to give a certain 
they're going for a certain look and uh, I think it looks fantastic but I'm not sure exactly what they're particularly they're going for other than the the angle of the grain is away from you I guess to uh, accent the the depth gives you give you some depth here on the the dash has a soft to the touch dash with the stitching and just overall everything looks fantastic so the seat okay let's go let's talk a little bit more about the seat because i'm sitting in the seat i actually have a massager going on my back so right here on the screen there's a little uh, switch on the side of the seat that i showed you before that goes up and down uh, that you can change so so you can change the side bolsters the lumbar and the seat cushion extender um, but the actual massage is on right now but it has different settings so we can turn that so we can go to so right now you can change the speed the intensity and uh, where you want the um, what kind of so you have lumbar shoulder advanced so i guess it goes through all of them so we'll go to advanced right there and then massage is on we can turn it off and let's go to side bolsters so lots of different adjustments here as far as the uh as far as the seat goes it's really amazing heated and cooled seats by the way I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back on. That's really cool. So the seats just get better and better. Not only are they just generally comfortable sitting in the seat, um, but sitting in the seat and then you have massage, you have the ability to customize everything to exactly the way you want it. So anyways, I can talk about the seat for a long time. But anyways, here's the steering wheel. So you have a leather wrap steering wheel with the, uh, the, the black here on the outside and the lighter color here on the inside fantastic looking so that way you have the uh, the portion that your hands are touching is the darker so it doesn't really um, you know show any kind of show as much as far as like say if your hands were to get oil on it or whatever uh, but the inside you still have that bright color and the inside looking nice then you have the Volvo non reflective surface in here but then you have the Volvo and the chrome popping out from it your cruise control is here on the left side, and it's the adaptive cruise control radar system in which you can adjust the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Um, so pushing these buttons right here will give you a little bit of information showing you the distance here between you and the vehicle in front of you. Really handy feature. I mean, it's just... I hear a lot of people, I don't have it in my vehicle, I wish I did because every every person that I know has it, uh, they can't do it without it because they can set it and they don't have to constantly change their speeds or cancel their cruise control on the highway, it just adapts to the vehicles in front of them. Here on the right side is your volume for your radio, changing through your tracks for your uh, um, either our radio stations or audio source tracks, things like that. You can make selections here. And then here's a little button for different information in the center screen. We'll get to that in just a minute. And then your voice recognition is here. This is where you can, uh, you know, push the button and, and make calls, uh, receive calls, things like that, depending on what's happening in the moment. Windshield wiper controls are here on the right side. Here on the left side is your turn signal, but on the same stock you have your headlight controls. So you have off, parking light, on, and then you have an automatic and you can turn on your auto dim headlights here. So you can turn that on or, on or off. And then you have your fog light button and then your rear fog lights. So your front and rear fog lights are here. Okay, so the gauges is actually a screen. So as you can see, everything is represented similar to analog, analog gauges. So your speedometer is there on the left with a digital speedometer in the center. And on the right side is your RPM gauge. And it's all digitally uh, rendered. So let me zoom in a little bit here because there's a lot of information. Your outside temperature, you can see it's quite hot today. Um, has some information here as far as your rear child lock 
uh, de deactivate it. So when I push it on or off, it will let me know there. And you have your, uh, the current sp speed limit is right in here. The RPMs, what gear you're in, fuel gauge. So if I push this button right here, it pops up this little menu so we can make selections. So we can choose our trip, we can go through and get the information there. Scroll to the right, we can change media sources, so AM, FM, satellite radio, um, Pandora, all these different ways of playing music through the sound system. Your phone, now there's not one paired, but, right, but you'll have the ability to um, have the information there on your phone here in the center console. But let's go ahead and choose navigation. So we make that selection. Calculated. So Please you, proceed to the highlighted route. So you notice the gauge is shrunk down a little bit and it actually puts the map right there in the center. So you can not only have the map in the center, you can also have it on the screen and expand it out. Um, really convenient. And it's gonna give you that turn by turn directions in the heads up display as well. So let's go ahead and pop this up, cancel guidance, and that goes away. So this is a really handy feature. So while your hands are on the wheel, you can make really key selections. You don't have to go over to the main screen to do all this stuff. All right. And speaking of the screen, before we get into that, there's a Bowers and Wilkins uh, speaker right here in the center. And man, this is a fantastic sounding now I've done a, um, if you search on YouTube, you can, you know, Bowers and Wilkin uh, sound test or sound experience. It's really hard to convey the quality sound of this, you know, these, these cars. So I try to record it, but it depends on how you're going to listen to it or whatever. But if you see, listen to it in person, it's just absolutely amazing. The Bowers and Wilkin system. Okay. So here's the, uh, the touch screen here in the center and you can see it's a prominent part. It's basically the only thing here. There's very little actual physical buttons. Okay, so you have your clock. But the way this, the way this uh, screen is set up, you have these main buttons right here that will, now these will change depending on what you're, what, what you're in at the time. So your radio's here, navigation is up here. And then your settings, so this is one of the ones that will change. So right now we have the audio set at the Gothenburg Concert Hall, which else sounds really great, like I mentioned. So let's just kind of show you. Right here on the right side is your applications. And then if you scroll to the left, um, you have your different settings here for your car for turning different things on. So, so let, right here is like a home button. So right now I'm already in the home button, but it's reminding me that, hey, I can scroll horizontally to access side panels. Okay, so if I'm in that side panel and I push the home button, it takes me back to the center portion. So you notice that one that says concert hall. Uh, that's because that's what we're, you know, we have selected, um, the sound experience. But if I wanna go to driver performance, now it puts that information here. So when I push home, it's right there. So you see, it depends on what I'm actually in. I can do Google searches. I can do all kinds of stuff um, on this screen, but it's really neat. And let's go to the sound experience. I think it's pretty cool where you can have the concert hall, individual stage, and you can make the intensity. You can change the intensity. You can go into the studio and change from, you know, concentration on the driver or the rear or all. Um, really cool features here and it sounds amazing. I, can't, I know I keep saying that, but it's true. All right, so let's go to what else. We've got travel link. That's a really um, awesome feature here. We can get different information, fuel prices, your nearest fuel ga uh, gas station. You can check your weather, all that. And let's go over here to the left. You know, your lane keeping aid, your park assist, your cross traffic alert, uh, your distance alert. So if you get close to a vehicle, um, you, it'll you can set it to alert you, which is nice. You can look at your camera. It has park in and park out. This is where it will automatically steer the steering wheel for you and help you uh, get into a parking space. And I've demonstrated that before in the XC90 and it's really cool and uh, 
if you want to check that out, just let me know and I'll send you a link. Headrest fold, this is where you can automatically fold the headrest in the back. You just push that button and the rear headrest fold. Actually, one, one seat's up, so let's go ahead and demo that right now. So you can see what that does. Just kind of give you some be uh, better visibility back there. Um, the headrests aren't that big, but still gives you the ability to, to fold them down. And if you want to turn off the stop, the start stop feature, you can push that button. Heads up display, you can turn on or off, blind spot monitoring system, all these different uh, safety features. The active bending lights, you can turn that off if you want. Same thing with the fog lamp with the corner illuminated. Um, so when you're turning the steering wheel, it's going to turn on the fog lamp in the dire that direction to help you see. You can turn that off if you just don't want to have that on there. You can also adjust the passenger seat. So if I push this button, now when I adjust the, make the adjustments on my side, it's going to move the passenger seat. So I'm just gonna show you. So you can see, I can move the passenger seat around. Isn't that awesome? So I don't actually have to reach over there and adjust it. Um, I could do it right here just by making that selection. Now the wiper service position is pretty neat. I push that button and it's gonna move the windshield wipers all the way up to one side. So I can just stand on one side and change the windshield wiper uh, blades. All right. So you get the idea as far as the main features. There's just three screens here in the center and then right and left. Climate control pops up here and you can make your selections where you want the air to blow like so. You can have it automatic, and then your fan speed, your seat, heated, cooled, and then your heated steering wheel controls are here, and the passenger side as well. You can make your temperature adjustments here, just make the selection. And then you can close it. You also can adjust the rear, rear climate main climate and parking climate. So you can precondition the vehicle at a certain time. So you can add a timer and it can precondition the vehicle before you get to the vehicle. Uh, like say in the morning, you're getting ready for work. You're gonna leave at a certain time. You can already have the heat on or whatever the case may be. So the parking climate can be adjusted separately from the main and the rear climate. I also have this little button right here. You push that and it pops down and then you have your settings it's all your different settings you can have um, sound navigations media communication climate system and my car we can go into the owner's manual this is really fantastic so once you get the vehicle this is a very um, very like feature rich vehicle so uh, you can actually go into the owner's manual here on the screen in case you have any questions so right here I want to show you the I have this pre-selected the heads-up display because I wasn't able to show you all the things there. So you have, um, just kind of give you an idea of what you can see on the screen. So it's a full, complete owner's manual and it's searchable, okay? I can make selections, I can um, start at home, look for categories, exterior, interior favorites, we can look at videos. All this is just fantastic. And then we can make searches. We can also star and bookmark certain features that we want to go back to. This is uh, just really good. All right, so let's go back here. All right. So what do you think about that screen? Isn't that nice? It has all these different features. The clarity and the resolution is fantastic. And the only thing I would add that you want to keep a microfiber cloth with you and wipe off the fingerprints after a while every so often because it will uh, accumulate fingerprints. Okay, so down here is a volume for your radio. Play and pause, change through the tracks or audio sources there. You have a micro SD card. And then your front and rear defrosters and a four-way flashers. Okay, so here's your shifter. And then we're not done with the screen. We still have lots more stuff to show on the screen. But uh, moving on here, we're, we're gonna get to that. So here's the shifter and it has like this uh, leather boot right here. Very comfortable and high end looking. So let's go ahead and put it in reverse. So when I put it in reverse, pop up on the screen, not only it's gonna turn on the parking sensors, you can also make the park in and park out selections here. 
pops up those. But you have your backup camera. So you have the backup camera with the active guidelines. So as I turn the steering wheel, the guidelines will move as well. And we can turn that feature off. We can also turn off the, uh, the cross traffic alert if we want to. And it has the representation of what camera is on right here. The reason why is because if we go to 360 view, we can see all around the vehicle. So it's gonna give, me, give us a view all around. Now on the extreme corners, it's gonna be a little distorted, um, but you know, kind of gives you that top down view using all the cameras. As I turn the steering wheel now, it still has the active guidelines there, giving us an idea of where those wheels are gonna go. This is relevant, especially like next to a curb or something. You don't wanna hit the curb with your, uh, your, your wheel or anything. So you can kind of keep an eye on that as well. But we can look at different areas. So with the camera system, we can look here in the front. In front of, so right now this is looking in front of the vehicle. Look at the clarity of the cameras. I mean, it is really, really good. Look at the clouds and everything. And of course, it's a, it's a wide angle lens, so it's a little distorted looking, but just the, uh, the amount of clarity you have on these cameras is fantastic. So go back to the, there, we can see the side of the car. So as I turn the steering wheel, it still has the active guideline. You can actually see the little tire popping out there as, uh, as I turn the steering wheel. We can see the right side. So if we want to get really close to that curb, or if we want to get you know really close or whatever, or make sure that we're not hitting something, we can keep a close eye there. And of course, we can always look at the backup camera directly behind the vehicle. We can also zoom. So we get like a little bit closer. But really, fantastic easy to use camera system that uh you know pops up as soon as you you know put it in reverse now you can go forward with the camera system so if i drive around like this i'm gonna move forward a little bit just so you can see what i'm talking about so you can see i can creep through the uh, parking lot as long as I'm, I'm going at low speeds i can drive around and you know kind of keep an eye on this camera system here on the screen i can also have the front camera so if I want that that front camera on as I'm driving here as long as I'm going low speeds I can see what's going on there in the front and it shows you visual representation of what camera is on right now okay really like that camera system okay so we already saw the uh, the start button here we can you also turn it to the right to turn it off as well Okay, so the drive mode, let's go ahead and push that in and we can scroll it up and down. So you have eco, comfort, off-road, and dynamic. Um, so basically, there's a couple things it does when you change it. So the eco mode will give you the best fuel economy. When you make that selection, it's going to put the vehicle at a certain height. So it's gonna raise or lower the vehicle, uh, usually lower it, depending on where you're at, It'll lower it down. So right now it's lowering but it's also going to change the, uh, the gauges. And it's going to give you, of course, efficient drive. So it's also gonna li going to limit your climate control and your acceleration, different things like that to give you the optimal fuel economy. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go up to there. And when I select it, I want you to see the, how the gauges change. So you can see now it's going to give you a, a little meter there. So that way you st stay in that green zone. So kind of helps you with your driving experience as far as staying in that uh, that economical range as far as the engine goes. Now, if I put it in comfort, you can see it goes back to that normal screen that we saw before. If I go to off-road, it's going to change the speedometer. So you can see now I have a maximum speed that I can go into. You don't want to go too fast. And then the dynamic, let's push that. It ups the RPMs a little bit. Um, and this whole time is changing the height of the vehicle. So the off-road goes really high, the dynamic goes kind of low, you know, lower. Um, so it changes this, the height, it changes everything, everything it possibly can to achieve uh, the goal here. So like say with the off-road, raising it up is going to give you a better ground clearance. It's going to, you know, tune the, the, um, the suspension, the 
four wheel drives or the all wheel drive system, everything to give you that, that better experience. Um, so that's your drive mode. And it's a little bit more complicated. I'm trying to summarize everything, but give you an idea. I'll, I'll put some links in the description where you can you know research all this stuff, a little bit more detail, but I'm just kind of going over everything rapidly so this this video won't be uh three days long or whatever okay so the parking brake is here this is an electronic parking brake and it secures the rear wheels so we can uh when you when you engage it pulling it up it's going to give you a little indicator up here but to release it you have to push the brake and push it down and it will release the parking brake you can actually feel it in the pedal as it engages and releases and this is your brake hold so when this is turned on, this will allow you to, as you come to a stop on a, say a stoplight or a stop sign and you're standing, you're, you're waiting for a while, you can let go of the brake once you come to a complete stop. It'll hold the vehicle there until you push the accelerator. So that way you don't have to hold the brake the whole time. Uh, you know, that's why they call it the brake hold. Okay, so more of that driftwood here. Really nice looking. This slides back. Revealing some cup holders, some storage spaces, 12 volt power supply, little place to put some stuff, place to put the key. Um, you can, well, it's not exactly the, the place to put the key, but it's a small place that looks like it's about that size. There's actually is a place to put the key right in here. So if the battery was dead on the key and you use the physical key to enter the vehicle, you place the vehicle, the key right in this little sensor spot and it will, um, it will sense the key there. So that way you can drive the car even if the battery goes dead in the key fob. All right, so here's your center armrest and it's soft to the touch. It lifts up and goes way back too, so it kind of gets out of the way. So here's a felt line storage compartment with a little rubber mat in the bottom. And then this is where you'll find a USB charger and your USB input uh, for your sound system. Rear view mirror and it's edgeless, check it out. It's an auto dim rear view mirror. So at nighttime it's going to auto dim as well as the side mirrors. And then you have your home link garage door opener controls under here and the digital compass interior lights led and you have turn on all your interior lights or you can have them turn on um, automatically like if you open up the door that kind of thing this is for your uh sunroof your panoramic sunroof which we'll get to in a minute your visor has mirrors and lights little clip right here okay so let's look at the large panoramic sunroof look at that so it has a shade that covers up the entire thing but it doesn't block a hundred percent of the light there's a little bit of light shining through there so gently push this little thing right here and it will push back the shade like so and then you have you can push this up and down like that and then of course you can open it up push it again and go all the way back okay that's as far back as it goes the rear portion is fixed the front portion is the only thing that moves let's go ahead and close that So really nice having this huge ability to see the sky, see the stars, and also helps out with the backseat drivers from their uh, claustrophobia or whatever. Okay, let's look at the visibility. Now, I have one seat down, one seat up, but uh, just in general, give, give an idea. You can see that the headrest is down now because I use the headrest fold, but the headrest kind of lines up with the pillar back there anyway. But look at all the glass. So you have lots of glass to see out of, lots of windows, and just the, the clear, I really like the clarity of the, uh, the glass with the privacy glass. You can really see out quite well. I mean, it doesn't uh, impede your 
your view as far as the privacy glass goes. But of course, it has all kinds of sensors and everything to help you with your uh, your blind spots. But it's not a real big deal anyway. Just looking at it. All right. Okay. Last but not least, let's look at this window sticker. All right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over it quickly. So you're gonna have to use the pause button if you want to read every little detail here. Um, so yeah, there's the performance, the audio, technology, safety, luxury and convenience. Okay, so looking over here, the inscription features are listed here with the price. Convenience package listed with the price. Vision package. Luxury seat package advanced package and look at there the Bowers and Wilkins premium sound $3,200 ad that explains why it sounds so awesome has the air suspension all these all these ads look at all that all right so there you have it, 2018 XC60, completely redesigned. Um, they're making it more like the XC90. They take the, the good stuff and put it in here. And um, for a midsize uh, SUV, I mean, this thing is fantastic. The seats are comfortable. The sound system is awesome. And I know I keep mentioning those two things, but those are those are the things that really stand out. Also, the driftwood in here. Um, the the ability the, the way you when you steer the vehicle it's very comfortable now when you put it in dynamic mode it's going to give a little bit of a stiffer feel more of a sporty feel um, but just kind of cruising around here on the in the the parking lot it's really easy to turn it has that you know, electric power steering overall design it's like a work of art this vehicle so thank you for watching you have to really check it out in person that's all I can say so after you watch this video anyway you'll be able to appreciate it more in person I think. So thank you for watching. Thank you to Parkway Volvo here in Wilmington, North Carolina. And I'll see you guys next time.